This morning we're spending a bit of time with the Shimungwe female and her cub. And with them playing, the cub going after the, the mother's tail and just having the best time. It's learning exactly how to stalk, how to tackle, wrestle, all of these skills it's going to then need when it gets older and becomes independent. It's all uh, vital in the development of this cub. There is a kill here. She must have made this kill last night sometime because we did see her yesterday afternoon and she wasn't here so throughout the course of the evening she's made the kill she's gone across collected the cub and together they've been here feeding on it uh, currently the mum's just lying down in the shade here the cub's gone wandering off behind us every now and then she's giving off a soft contact call basically telling the cub to come back here and not wander too far away It's a young male, so it's probably going to be with its mother for about two years, maybe a little bit longer than that. And that's the perfect time for it to then grow and develop and hone all of its skills before it's then pushed on out and becomes nomadic. And in that nomadic period, it's then moving around, just trying to find its feet, as well as growing and building its strength, before it's then able to challenge another rival male for a territory. And that would normally be at the age of about four to five years old. What we're going to hope for is for them to go up into this marula tree and go after their kill. It looks as though they may be heading towards the kill. It's called you copy. Fingers crossed that they're going to approach and if they do, we want them to do it on the right hand side of the tree because that's a nice angle for us to see them going up. It was phenomenal to have the cub actually go up into the tree and start feeding for quite some time. Something else has caught its attention, giving it a bit of a fright and it doesn't want to be up in the tree and it's now come charging down out of the tree and scampering across back to where its mother is. We're not too sure exactly what it could have been, but I mean it's been a phenomenal sighting nonetheless, so let's head back to camp. This morning we're spending some time at one of the larger water holes because we'd heard from some of the rangers that they had seen a female hippo with two very young calves that looked exactly the same age or the same size. Both right beside her and sometimes even resting on her back when she's in the water. Pretty unusual for hippos to give birth to twins but it's not completely out of the question. We've just come across to investigate for ourselves. Being very small as a hippo and in the water where it's cold during the winter time they're going to lose a lot of body heat very quickly so some of the hippos will come out of the water to rest on the banks during the day and bask in the sun and so especially for the younger ones that's where they want to be. Just the fact that both of these have been seen on one female's back 
probably means that they could be twins. So we don't want to count that out just yet. But I think it's a bit more investigation is going to have to help us decide what's going on. So something's triggered them off and they've all gone charging into the water. Mother leading the way and the two youngsters going in after her. So we'll just see now because if they climb onto her back or if they spend a lot of time with her, it means that they've got a closer bond to her, most likely meaning that she's the mother. If one of them goes off to another adult, it could mean that that is potentially its mother. It's not an exact science, it's just us guessing here. Hippos, although they live in the water, aren't the best swimmers. They actually walk along and run along the bottom when they're moving. They can't tread water. For a lot of the hippos that you see, they're resting on the ground, either standing or lying down just with their heads popping out of the water. But for the youngsters, they can't often reach the ground and be able to breathe at the surface as well. So they then try and climb on their mother's backs just to make breathing a bit easier. So while we're sitting filming those hippos with what looks like twin calves. We've heard some impala going berserk behind us on the northern banks of the Sand River. We haven't had any luck around here with whatever had caused those impala to start alarming. We found a number of different herds of impala, all of which look pretty relaxed. So let's get back across to those hippos. There's two adults out of the water and three youngsters, two of which are the same size. One's lying a little bit closer to us, the second one behind this one adult that's standing up and then the third one which is a little bit bigger is just in front here as well so very difficult to tell if they are twins although hippos are designed to withstand the temperatures of the water they've got very thick skin and a layer of blubber underneath that which helps insulate them the water temperatures in winter definitely do drop quite low and so in order to help them thermoregulate instead of staying in the water during the day they'll come out onto the bank where they'll then warm up basking in the sun. We're leaving a lot of questions unanswered here but it's just awesome to see some very young hippo out and about and especially out of the water now. Anyway, it doesn't look like too much more is going to happen here. Let's leave them resting in the sun. We'll definitely monitor it quite closely over the next few weeks and see exactly what happens with these youngsters. And if it is twins, then that's pretty spectacular to be able to witness. Just found a young male lion. We'll spend a bit longer with him now, try and work out who he is. He could possibly be one of the Stixon and Kuhuma young males. With the death of the Ottawa male and the lack of any lions calling off in the western sector, we've seen a lot of new nomadic coalitions roaming through the area just looking for their little patch of territory now. So starting to get quite a significant main development there, but not yet a full mature dominant male. propped himself up on a termite mound just getting a good view of the surrounding land here. Because I pretty fixated on a large herd of buffalo over in the distance, about a kilometer away from here. But being by himself, it's quite unlikely that he'll go after the buffalo. He's gonna need a bit more support and backup to be able to bring one down. But he may then lurk along the tail end of the buffalo, hoping to see if there's any slow, weak, or old ones, as well as any youngsters that are maybe left behind.
We'll hang around here for a bit longer and see if he maybe goes in the direction of the buffalo. But at the moment, it's still quite a distance away, so it's not too much that's going to be happening anytime soon. It's starting to warm up a bit, so it's every likelihood that he may then just settle down in the shade and wait out for the rest of the day.